All right, guys, and welcome back. Welcome back to Real World Assets on the Blockchain. And in this uh, section, we're going to talk about centrifuge. We just talked about the art exchange, and we just also talked about why we need real world assets on the blockchain. We need to increase our market cap. We need to increase our liquidity. And centrifuge is, in my opinion, the unicorn in this field. This can be the Facebook moment for Google, for Google, for blockchain. This can be the 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 the, the Napster or the, the the Netflix or the Facebook or the Google uh, that we have been waiting for in the in the blockchain space. So pay good attention and try to understand what Centrifuge does and what Centrifuge is. Um, yeah, to get a good understanding at first, uh, as you can all see in this illustration, Centrifuge basically. Uh, uh, there's uh, there's an offline B2, it is mostly used for B2B businesses. Uh, why? Uh, let one, one step back, like if I do a transaction in real life, I go to a supermarket and I buy a product. I buy this product with my money. I buy this product with my euros or with my dollars. I give the supermarket my money and I get an apple, I get a banana or I get some uh, some some other vegetables or products for, for the money that I give to the supermarket. Okay. Then that supermarket actually buys uh, uh, their products from a bigger corporation or another business. And that other business supplies the supermarket. In that supply chain, mostly the other supplier has to wait like 60 days, 30 days, 100 days for their payments. And this is a huge market, as you can imagine. There's a lot of money floating around. And in, the, in that time span, a lot of money is just floating. It's, it's, it's an agreement that the supermarket makes to actually pay the supplier for the apples, or for the bananas, or for the products that they supply to the supermarket. This is a huge, huge market. It's a $180, $180 trillion global market. And it's a market that is called uh, like invoice financing. Right. Okay. And it's you know mostly useful for, for bigger corporations, but also very useful for SMEs. As you can imagine, in this supermarket chain, there's a lot of small medium enterprises connected, maybe some local businesses or some smaller international businesses that are connected to supply the supermarket or to supply the stores with all their products. And uh, Centrifuge is playing a big role and solving a huge problem for these uh, for these SMEs and also giving us as retail investors a opportunity to participate in this uh, quite uh, complex uh, complex market. Centrifuge, as you can see here, constructed a, um, a concept called Tin Lake and they created their own chain called Centrifuge chain. And <coughs> Tin Lake plus Centrifuge uh, a tin Lake plus Centrifuge chain is basically what makes Centrifuge, right? Okay. With Centrifuge chain and Tin Lake, any business can now uh, originate their real-world assets on chain and access liquidity through Centrifuge. So it's actually not only invoices, but invoices is a, you know, also like the hello world use case for a concept like this, right? Um, and what that exactly uh, entails, there is a lot of articles in the description below that go more in-depth to it, but I will try to have a short uh, in-depth recap on what that means. Uh, Tin Lake is, is a securitized debt for Ethereum, which lets investors and borrowers uh, finance their own asset pools. Tin Lake smart contracts are open source and integrate easily into the DeFi ecosystem. Tin Lake uses Centrifuge chain to originate individual fungible assets used as collateral for loans. All right. Centrifuge chain is an open source provision and proof of stake blockchain built on Substrate. This is the uh, starting point for originating real world assets. It enables users to bring their assets on chain as non-fungible tokens, NFTs. NFTs are easily bridged to Ethereum from day one. The chain is powered by the Radial token, 
which empowers its holders with governance powers and provides incentive for validators to operate it. Um, they are now uh, live on mainnet with 10 validators and they're they're live but they're running a test so they're live but they're they're like beta and beta stage so that it's not you can already exit it you can you can look into it you can contact them if you're actually as a me and you need these kind of services they will uh, provide it to you uh, but they're live so that's exciting and we're gonna look into that in our next slides so there is this really cool uh, use case, this is a really cool uh, example where sent that is now actually live and we're going to look more in depth into that later on in the following slides where MakerDAO, Centrifuge and Console uh, uh, Frights did a partnership, like a real partnership, not like, you know, how we see that with uh, our friend uh, uh, Justin or other chains that do partnership. This is a real partnership and this was also not really hyped. This was not really hyped. Not a lot of people were actually aware or saw the significance of this partnership. But what was happening in this partnership is that big container boats that are moving around the world to supply, as just explained, for example, supermarkets or other chains. Uh, these, these big container ships have a lot of like invoices that will be paid in longer periods of time. But it's kind of certain, it's kind of like 95% certainty that these invoices will be paid uh, because the people that actually take the goods, when they consume the goods, like a supermarket, the chance that the supermarket will not pay its suppliers is really low because the supermarket needs new supplies, right? When the supermarket is not going to pay its suppliers, yeah, then it loses uh, its connections. So that's not really uh, good. All right, so before we dive deeper, I want to uh, talk a little bit more about the concept of invoice financing so that we understand this concept better so that when we dive now deeper in the more technical blockchain version of this, that we understand the context. So invoice financing is a concept wherein I as a uh, business, so I, have actually, I actually have a business and also in, in my own business, a lot of times when um, I do my work, uh, sometimes like a lot of times this happens. So we work also with our business, we work for Tencent and Tencent only pays us after 60 days. And uh, yeah, after 60 days. So what I actually can do is that I can trade that promise that uh, that Tencent will pay me, I can put that in an NFT and I can get that liquidity sooner and I can pay like a small interest or uh, I can pay like a small uh, 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 fee uh, that when, uh, that so, so that is worthwhile for the person who loan me that money. And then when Tencent pays, the money doesn't go to me directly, the money goes into that NFT and then goes to the NFT holders instead of going directly to me. So it's like it pre-finances my cash flow. Uh, put here this link that really explains well what the business is. This is a huge business and uh, there's a lot of interesting players active. And I think this, this business can be disrupted quite significantly. We can also see that uh, uh, yeah, Centrifuge is being presented by MakerDAO to, to bigger corporations. So it's going, uh, going, to, going to high places at this moment. Okay, before we uh, continue, um, uh, we will continue about centrifuges, about NFTs in our next in our next slides. So read up about what invoice financing exactly is, and then in our next presentation, we're gonna dive deeper into the centrifuge concept. Thank you guys, and see you in the next slides.